It's the second ever in its history. But as Saudi Arabia held municipal elections, is this ultra-conservative country really opening up? Or is this yet another attempt to stop the spread of the Arab Spring? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Shakun Tulasantharan. Saudi Arabia held its second ever municipal elections on Thursday. Over 5,000 candidates competed for 816 seats to fill half of the country's 285 councils. The other half are appointed by the government. The first elections were held in 2005, but this second round has been delayed since 2009. The vote comes just four days after Saudi Arabia's absolute monarch, King Abdullah, granted women the right to vote and run in the next municipal elections in 2015. But whether these latest steps are a move towards democracy for the ultra-conservative country remains to be seen. While Saudi Arabia's elections have been the focus of much attention as pro-democracy campaigners, Shia Muslims and women demanding greater civil rights took part in unprecedented protests in March in the notoriously closed society. And it appears King Abdullah is taking steps to try and quell the unrest. In February, he unveiled benefits for Saudis worth $37 billion to be distributed among its population of 18 million. The kingdom led a GCC effort to aid Bahrain and Oman, who were faced with popular uprisings in an attempt to fend off any further protests inside their own territory. And most recently, the government announced that women would be eligible to vote and stand in 2015 elections, a first in its history. Joining us to discuss all this are our three guests. In Washington, D.C., Ali Al-Ahmed, the director of the Institute of Gulf Affairs. In Doha, Majoub Zawiri, professor of modern and contemporary history of the Middle East at Qatar University. And joining us via broadband from Safwa, Saudi Arabia, Leila Al-Kadim, the coordinator for Baladi, a group campaigning for women to participate in municipal council elections. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us. If I could start with you, Ali, uh, only 300,000 men actually registered to vote in Thursday's elections and the government apparently adding some 700,000 names from those who registered in 2005. Who actually showed up to vote? Very few people, uh, mostly older uh, people and people who are in support of the government uh, message or uh, line that uh, these are genuine and meaning, meaning, meaningful uh, elections. I think the people of Saudi Arabia have voted against these elections by not uh, going to the polls. And it's very clear that these elections really have no significance as they do not meet any international standard in terms that these councils have no powers whatsoever. So uh, why elect a, a council that has no power? Secondly, they only elect half of the seats. In addition, these councils contradict international law in terms that they isolate and prevent and ban women from any role in terms of voting or participating. So these elections, uh, all in all, are meaningless. Apparently not even members of the royal family showed up to vote. Absolutely, they have not sh showed up ever to vote in this or the previous election. And that even shows you that the ruling family themselves do not think of these elections and, as, uh, uh, you know, and give them any weight. Machup, so fewer people showed up then in 2005 when apparently some 20% uh, uh, cast their vote. Uh, is this because people don't care or because they know the elections won't change anything? <laughs> Well, let me put things in a context. Uh, in 2003, King Abdullah started with the package of reform in Saudi Arabia, where basically one of those uh, items in this package was actually um, allowing uh, for kind of more participation or engagement. I call it engagement on the local level and allowing people to participate or to have an election uh, in their cities. Uh, such an uh, local elections, um, I believe it has no political mean. It's sort of allowing uh, people to serve their own people in their city. More important, they have 50 percent. 50 percent of, part, uh, of, of the members, they are allowed to uh, pa participate. Uh, 
Um, so, so basically, um, this uh, this this uh, election with 20% of participation in 2005, uh, and with the uh, uh, low figures so we have we so far about today's election, it shows that people they are uh, not interested in these elections. Uh, and I think this is not because of uh, you know it's not a, only a political message. It's actually sort of punishment to those who were elected in the previous election and they did not do enough to serve their own people. So basically, uh, uh, I think we have to be very careful about the political assessment of the elections. I, I believe it is part of uh, you know, uh, serving, serving people within the cities with a, with a, with a, with a very limited, uh, I would say, uh, 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 authorities or responsibilities because basically the government is in control and, and the government is trying to have uh, more role in, 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 in the cities. And I think the failure uh, uh, we witnessed last year in Jeddah, where basically it's approved that there is kind of problem with infrastructure where the city was flooded with water, uh, and it, it approved that these uh, uh, local councils, they are not doing enough. And I think this is what was, was a significant uh, message to the government and to the people that these uh, elections is not a serious election. One point here that these council members have no power under the law. So oh, they, the only power they have is to write a letter to the minister of the municipalities to suggest something. That they, that's the all power they have. They have no, no other power. So they cannot fail if they have no power to, to act. Leila, let's bring you into the discussion. King Abdullah said just days ago that women could oh. run and vote uh, in the 2015 elections. Uh, but you've been... Uh, locked out, uh, shut out of this round of elections. How do you feel about this being another men-only election? Well, um, of course, uh, we, we are wait, um, waiting until the last minute, uh, uh, in fact, and hoping that uh, there will be a decision that changes this uh, one-part uh, uh, election. And uh, in fact, we were uh, in, in our campaign, the Levy campaign, we, we, we are um, uh, working now since uh, about uh, more than one year and a half. Uh, we are a group of, of women from all uh, parties of Saudi Arabia. Uh, at, we represent all uh, uh, big uh, regions in Saudi Arabia. And uh, we, uh, we were really hoping that uh, uh, there will be a decision that allows women uh, to participate in this election, not wait for another election. Now, uh, the, uh, we, we are still, uh, by the way, hoping for uh, a last minute uh, uh, decision because as uh, it was mentioned by, by your two guests, that uh, half of the, uh, uh, of, of the um, members uh, of the uh, municipal councils are uh, um, design, uh, designated by the government. So we are still hoping that, that uh, the king uh, or the ministry uh, 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 concerned, they will take a decision of uh, nominate some uh, women uh, in um, the uh, municipal councils to be part of this uh, uh, session. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, at the same time uh, uh, we uh, we cannot uh, be but positive about the the uh, decision of the of, of the decree of the king because uh, it is positive. Uh, it is finally uh, recognizes women as uh, uh, citizens uh, and uh, that uh, they, they they can participate. Uh, and, and the decision making of the country, we know that these uh, maybe these uh, 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 this particular uh, election is maybe it's not really uh, um, it doesn't represent the decision making uh, um, institutions uh, if, we, if we can say. But uh, still, we want to be present. This is the first. Uh, this was the first election uh, uh, anyway allowed and the only one uh, until now to men. So uh, women will be. Women to be part of that. Now, whether women are allowed to vote uh, in 2015 or not much, does it really matter if these elections are just symbolic, if these uh, municipal councils don't really hold any power? You know, at the end of it, you, you are right. I mean, with this, with the fa with the fact, uh, with the fact that you know these uh, uh, councils, they don't have actually enough powers. Um, we have to uh, again to remind of three facts about you know the, the, the this election and the the last 
uh, the the last uh, I would say uh, uh, I would decision by the king to allow women to uh, participate in the elections. Uh, that that things first of all, you know, you have to look at the political the political and social structure of Saudi Arabia. What are the the forces in the dance society? We have we have the the, the monarch, we have the uh, scholars, the religious circles, and we have the tribal the tribal leaders or the tribalism in, as as as, an, as a phenomena in in the country. So those forces. Even if there is a political will to have a real elections with a full engagement of the people, you have to look at what are the impact of those people. So basically, even with if the woman uh, will participate in, in, in 2015 in the elections, you have to look at what will be the uh, uh, opinion, what will be the reaction of these forces, like religious circles, like scholars, and like the, those are very conservative circles. So we, ha I mean, it's very important to look to 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 uh, 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 take into consideration other factors and and uh, let's assume there is a political will to move on to a reform i think those forces they have a great impact in the process and even if the women will, part will participate in in the elections uh, uh, with, 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 I would say, with a lot of responsibilities, there will be a lot of observation to be made in the future about the whole idea of women participation. Ali, is there political will for reform uh, in Saudi Arabia? If these elections were just symbolic, why did the Saudi leadership decide to go ahead with it after postponing it for two years? I think the Saudi monarchy has been always uh, trying to give false promises to the people. This is not new. In the 1960s, King Saud, uh, the second king uh, of, of the state, promised elections and a full parliament. That never happened. And that's why it, it, the, uh, the promised 2015 elections or participation of, participation of women in, the, in these um, uh, limited or meaningless elections is not guaranteed because by that time, the King Abdullah will, will not be around most likely and the next king will decide uh, there is no need for elections uh, even if they are meaningless and women should not vote. So you really here you've seen a lot of uh, promises and that's very typical of, of the Saudi monarchy in their policies since, uh, since the inception of the state is a lot of promises and then slowly, slowly they walk away from them. And uh, so they, they were really just trying to uh, give the people some false hope. But I think the people of Saudi Arabia are now much more capable of understanding that these are false hopes. That's why you don't see the high uh, uh, turnout in the elections, not only this election, the second round, but also the first time in 2005. Very few people, in comparison to the number of the people in the country, very few percentage participated because they know that it is important to have real councils with powers and uh, uh, fully elected uh, uh, individuals, not the one that the government chooses to, to run and with with basically uh, with an outcome that has no impact on the ground. Like I said, uh, I want to assure you, to uh, reassert this. Members of municipal council in Saudi Arabia have no power whatsoever. They don't have limited powers. They have no powers. The only power they have is to write reports and send them to the minister. That's the only okay. power they have. All right, Leila. Back to you. Uh, what do you think? Is the Saudi government trying to give the people false hope, as Ali was saying? Uh, is this decision to hold these elections, uh, to let women vote and run in 2015, plus handing money out to people, is that all part of a plan to try and quell the unrest to stop the Arab Spring from spreading in Saudi Arabia? Well, I think we, we as women, we, we, we really don't focus maybe on that aspect of uh, we, or that kind of analysis of what, what are the intentions. I think we have uh, now we consider that we have a more important mission uh, that uh, this de decree of uh, um, uh, the guardian of the uh, two holy mosques and that we, we really welcomed very uh, happily. Uh, we, uh, we we will take this big opportunity to uh, uh, to to make uh, I mean to be active officially now uh, because uh, we we had problems to promote for our you know for our campaign and its objectives and uh, as you know I mean uh, you know especially engagement in women in 
politics. It's it's something very very uh, un, unaccepted and un, understand, uh, uh, understood in, in Saudi Arabia. So uh, even among women themselves, so uh, they don't consider this as a priority. So our our mission now and our priority is to start to prepare for uh, I mean uh, uh, the, the next. Uh, campaign, I mean the next session, by uh, 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 promoting this, um, if, we, if we can say, a, a culture of, like, of, of democracy, you know, of, of uh, the culture of democracy that will maybe, uh, if uh, it is a real, uh, a real um, uh, uh, awareness campaign, and uh, that will change the m mentality of people, and maybe that will um, lead to, to people making more pressure for uh, a more genuine, a more real uh, political, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, this, I mean, a more, um, uh, let's say, real uh, participation in the decision making and the political life. So we are focusing now on this uh, on this aspect. We want right. this uh, uh, we want this decision of the king to yeah. be real, uh, to be uh, active. So it is okay. still yet to be guaranteed that you will be allowed to run in 2015. That's, that, I, that, that, that's a very that's a very important question because now we know that uh, the the king, uh, you know, uh, made uh, uh, some or uh, several I would say several decisions that were very important and especially for women, and uh, that, that they, they they stayed in the in the drawers. You know, they, they have never been active, and uh, uh, the the most recent one that. Uh, the you know women uh, working as cashiers and uh, many many decisions like that so we are we are still not sure but we want to make it sure that this decision will be activated since the beginning since uh, uh, it means since now not waiting another four years and then be surprised by uh, being told the same thing that uh, we are not ready for women participation Majud, if i could uh, go back to you what do you think are these latest moves uh, uh, moves towards democracy or just uh, the government's attempts to try and calm unhappy Saudis? I'm a little bit, uh, 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 I have my own observation about using democracy. I, uh, I think what your guest was saying about the culture of democracy, which basically uh, coming uh, in the line with what government in, in Riyadh says, you know, uh, basically they, they need a gradual change towards kind of more engagement. Um, and this engagement may start with this uh, local elections. Uh, let's let's remember that uh, uh, you know uh, with, when you speak about democracy, it's not about just people going to vote. You speak about freedom of expression. You speak about constitution. You speak about they are. It's a package. It's it's not only the issue of, of elections. So basically, it's I think what 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 is needed now is actually raising the awareness of the importance of participation. And I think the low percentage of participation is an indication to the government that that people they are not really care of of the issue of of of, of uh, engagement of political participation or any sort of engagement uh, i think uh, the government may use this kind of low percentage of the elections to send a clear message to the world look especially those countries like the united states to put pressure on saudi arabia to have you know to have a quick reform Riyadh will say to them, look, this is our people. We know them better than you. We know the culture of these people. Look, uh, we, we, we had so far two elections. Look at the percentage of the uh, part particip participations. So basically, the low percentage, it's, it raised an important indication that the awareness kind of campaign to raise the awareness within the people about the importance of engagement and participation within any sort of elections or, 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 or uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, in, 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 in the country. A more important, actually, is, uh, is uh, you know, uh, having kind of a traditions. Uh, 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 and this is, uh, in a country uh, in, in like Saudi Arabia, it needs some time. And I think this is what, the gov what makes the government very relaxed about the whole issue and very convinced that, you know, uh, they are in a good position themselves okay. very well. Ali, how determined, how desperate are people in Saudi Arabia for change? How far would they go? They are desperate for change since the 1950s. In fact, uh, the movement and push for uh, public participation in power has been continuing. The, uh, the number of petitions uh, and demands 
uh, by the people uh, from different parts of the political spectrum, you Islamist, left, right, uh, center, uh, pan-Arabist. Uh, they have been pushing for public participation. In there, there has been several political movement uh, that was formed around the, those uh, demands. Uh, I just want to say that the, the people of Saudi Arabia are, are more than ready to participate in their government. If you look at Afghanistan, which has no history of political participation, and you cannot compare Saudi Arabia to Afghanistan in terms of education and, and uh, economic prosperity, yet the people of Afghanistan in droves participated in the elections. So in Saudi Arabia, if there was real elections that will produce real councils with powers, in, either in the parliament, at the national level, or in co local councils, you would see uh, an active participation <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in, in those elections. But okay. uh, if you have sham process, I think you will see the people understand it and will not uh, participate in such, uh, such situation. Back to you, Leila. How optimistic are you that real mm. elections, that uh, real steps towards democracy will actually happen in Saudi Arabia? Well, uh, I think it will need uh, it will need some time. Uh, I um, uh, agree with with uh, Mr. Mojib uh, that uh, the, the the culture of election is not uh, really there. It's not. It needs. Uh, uh, it needs time. Not only the the, uh, the awareness of the importance of participation in making the decisions, but also uh, the uh, you know the the the, the, the fact that uh, Saudi society is a tribal society that it's uh, really uh, um, run by this system, and uh, we we saw that it's uh, it's also one uh, other than uh, the fact that these um, uh, councils they don't have uh, any um, power. But but also uh, the, um, I mean, the, the tribal nature of the society uh, uh, played a role in, in uh, you know, the, the way people vote and, and, and people's choice. So uh, I think it needs uh, it needs some time. But at the same time, I think uh, we uh, uh, what is the, the optimistic part is that we have uh, we are a, um, a youth society. Uh, youth uh, generation, they they constitute the majority of this. Uh, I mean, a big, big majority of this uh, of this country, and uh, that uh, they have aspirations. They have they look for change, not only political. I mean, po political, social, economic, and uh, as you know, we have uh, a big uh, number of students now, uh, um, of boys and girls who are who study abroad and who bring other with them other ideas, other culture, and uh, I'm I'm optimistic that they will they will do the real change in the society. They uh, they really look for change. They uh, um, uh, they they uh, I mean the the way. Um, Things are for women, for example. I don't think they uh, they really fit uh, all this new generation who um, who who want uh, f um, you know um, uh, who want to be to okay. express them, their ideas freely to you know to have more uh, uh, um, to, to be to be listened to in the society. So right. I think I think they will they will do the difference. Mahjoub, last word to you. What do you think is going to bring real change to Saudi Arabia? I think uh, change uh, needs some needs some time. There is no doubt about it. And I think what is needed, actually, I agree with the guest in Washington that uh, Saudi Arabia society is, is very educated society. But education is not only the only guarantee, the only factor in that. People they need to you to know. Uh, how much they are influence the political process and they cannot do such so without having the institution which has this influence i think what's needed is the creation the creating the institution where ba where basically people can influence the political process and as long the as long as these institutions are not being created not only in saudi arabia and other countries there will be less Im the impact on on in creating that change there is no doubt that you know with with the legacies you know these countries went through last 60 or 70 years it it will take some time but this can be accelerated with 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 the with the with the goodwill and with the creating the with with having the environment and the institution where basically people can influence the political economic and social change in their societies
Thank you very much. We're going to have to leave it there for now. Thank you for your time and for sharing your perspectives. In Washington, Ali Al Ahmed. Here in Doha, Majub Zweri. And in Safwa, Leila Al Kadim. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. As always, we welcome your comments and suggestions. Please do email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Goodbye for now.